For this project, you will need your watercolor cup, or I'm sorry, a water cup with your paintbrush and your paints. If you don't have your paints, you can also use markers, and I will show you during this demonstration how to do that. You're also going to need your good piece of paper, your strong paper. You don't need, if you use the drawing paper, it will probably make a hole in it. Some of you may be wondering what that straw is for. So I am going to show you very quickly <clears throat> what the purpose of that straw is. You're going to take this shape and you're gonna simply paint it with water to the best of your ability. You do actually want the water to be not completely soaked in. You wanna kinda of have it blobby. Um, so it's okay if it's a big puddle just on that shape. That's why we use the crayon. It'll help keep it inside that shape. Now, I am going to use my blue paint um, as long as you use the color that you choose, you're fine, but I'm gonna use blue for this demonstration because all of my kids are using blue. Notice how it starts to spread out. Lots of fun, lots of fun, the coloring. I can then take my straw. I'm going to put my lips on one side and I'm going to, as if, you know, I'm about to drink my straw, okay? Or drink my drink from my straw. Do not suck in, you are not drinking this. I want you to put your lips on it and blow. It will make a noise, okay? Now, I would like you to do that, but you're gonna put this end of the straw down near your paper and then blow. Look at what happens. Now, some of it might go into another shape and that's okay. I'm not gonna be upset. You can have fun with this. If you wanna blow it into your, some of your other shapes, I am fine with that, okay? And then you're going to continue painting those other shapes. Okay, friends, so you saw the paint blow technique. And again, second and third graders, you are only using your cool colors today. So those are uh, purple, blue, and green. And it looks like we don't have a purple in this, so maybe I'm gonna show you how to do some tray mixing. All right, so again, we did the, the blowing in there. So here I can just simply put water on my uh, paint and I can paint towards me like I typically do. This is the normal painting technique Okay, and again, normal painting technique. Stupendous. All right, you also want different values. Notice this here blue is very, very light. That's super awesome. There are some darker spots, and this is relatively light. I don't like to use too much of my blue because it goes away super fast. And um, I'm going to do some green here. Uh, but this time, I'm going to add my water first. We're going to do the wet and wet technique where I put the water first and then I'm going to add some green. And it, that was similar to what I did here. The only difference was I blew on this one. I did not, I'm not blowing on this one. I'm just adding some green. And there we go. All right, fabulous. Now, another technique that you're going to see is you might want to get a tissue or paper towel, kind of dry this off a little bit. We're going to dab in our green paint, dab on here, and I'm just going to dab. This is a dabbing technique, but it's also a dry brush technique. Um, you get these little, oh, sugar cakes. Um, you get these little lines where you can see all of the little bristles when you do it like this. Um, you don't want to paint like this, okay? Um, when you're trying to paint clear one, 
solid uh, color. You don't want to paint like this. This is how you know you need more water on your paintbrush. But if you're doing this technique, you'll notice that this here looks very textured. Um, and by that I mean it looks like if you were to feel it, it might feel hairy or prickly. Okay, so this might be good for um, grass, it might be good for a um, pine tree, okay, it might be good for a kitty cat or a dog. Yes, you might not want a green kitty cat or dog, but that's an idea for you. Okay, now uh, again, I'm going to do the wet and wet technique, but I'm going to do some mixing right on here. So if I were to do that and then I were to do, um, let's do pink because we have pink. Not sure why we have pink and we don't have purple. A little strange, but I'm really getting in here because I really want to get that pink on here. Um, the pink shows up pretty light, so I'm going to try to get as much pink on here as possible. and. If you want to maybe not do the wet and wet technique when using the pink, that might help you too. Um, just giving you guys some ideas. I don't want to make holes in my paper and I'm afraid if I do it too many times it will make holes. And the reason I'm talking about uh, making holes is because I'm then going to go over here, I'm going to rinse this paintbrush out super good. Make sure I have some water on there. I'm going to dab in my blue and mix it with the pink. Okay, I might get a slightly purplish color. Okay, I might not. Um, I have a little too much blue in here, but there is a, a little bit of that pink showing through, so it did mix a little bit. Okay, last thing. We're going to do some tray mixing. Now my big kids were given uh, trays for this. You were not. So if you have a plastic um, or even a paper plate at home, you can use that. We're just going to use this side of our watercolor tray. We're going to add some blue. Fabulous. And I'm going to swoop it up, try to get as much color off. I'm going to rinse it out as best I can. Swoop it up. I'm going to add another blob over here. Usually I like to do the lighter one first. I did not do that here. I'm going to take the pink and I'm going to mix it in here. Again, I'm going to get some more pink. Just get this pink nice and dark. strong pink color. I'm going to get some of that off and I want to get a little bit more, um, I want it to be a little bit stronger, a little bit darker. I'm going to add a little bit of red, okay, because red and blue make purple, but sometimes when you mix uh, red and blue together it doesn't give you a pretty looking purple. All right, now because I've gone in here um, and I have pink and red in here, I'm going to rinse it out before I go back into my red. And I'm going to get a little bit more red. There you go. And now I'm going to mix my blue and my pink together. And it, it looks pretty blue, but when I put it down, it might be a little bit more um, purple. I'm going to add some red after I've rinsed it out. Okay, I went directly in there. Oh, that's looking a little bit more purple. And I'm going to add it here. And there you go. I do have purple now. Okay. I do not need to go back in my water cup because I have all the water I need right here. Sometimes habits do that. You don't need to do that. Okay. So I'm going to finish up coloring this in, but I'm going to show you before I do that something fun in case you forgot. Um, you know what? We have that. I'm going to get a green marker and I'm going to add a green marker here. 
Uh, the dry markers, the ones that are dying, they work really, really good for this. But I'm just kind of adding some color here. And again, I need to rinse this out good 10 times. And I can just color with water right directly over top of this. And you'll see that it's bleeding it together. Beautiful. And again, I'm holding my paintbrush to the best of my ability like a pencil. My alligator grips, as my kindergarten teachers would say. Okay, so there you go. That's some. Uh, that's a watercolor technique you can use if you run out of a different color paint. If you have uh, markers with you, go ahead and use that. I'm going to rinse this out ten times, swooping in there, and now I'm going to add. Continue going. So this is what it looks like when it's done. If you want to get a little bit creative, um, we can do something called a wash. I did uh, my wet and wet, I believe, over. No, no, I just painted over here. So if you paint or do your wet and wet, and then once it's dry, I can now add another color over top. This is called a wash. And I'm going to rinse it out because I just mixed colors. And putting my blue or my green rather, over top of my blue, I'm going to get something that looks a blue-green color. Okay, And some of my friends might call that uh, teal, they might call it turquoise, but we all can call it blue-green. We always say the primary color first, which is blue, and then the secondary color second, which is green. Okay. So there you go. That is all done. Let it dry. And when you're done, pop it into that art bag. Thank you for following along with that demonstration. So now that we're done, please make sure you take a picture of that or a video and post it in the comment section below. All right. Hold on to it. So if you need to put it in your art bag for next week or in a special spot so you remember it, Try to do that, okay? You're going to hold on to that artwork for next week. Remember, this week you're not being graded on how well you did your artwork. This week was more about the learning, okay? And showing me that you understood what value was. And you understood the different colors that we talked about. Thank you so much.